Hey guys, welcome back. And if you hit the subscribe button right now, I promise you that this will be one of the best decisions you have taken all day today. Okay, now jumping on to my today's topic. This is part of my Python tips and tricks series where I cover little bits of information, whether it is uh, about coding, about deep learning, or about something new that uh, I think is very cool for you to know about. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you today. This is a playground for your neural network. What do I mean by that? If you are interested in learning about hyperparameters, how do they affect your training? Uh, for example, learning rate or activation. So what is the influence of those on your training? This is a very visual way of learning. Of course, you can write your own code to on your own data sets to uh, understand this and I definitely encourage doing that but TensorFlow put together this uh, playground that's incredible and one of my colleagues actually mentioned to me about it today and that's why after work I'm recording this video so you guys know of it and you can get your hands on this so let's uh, jump into not the code this time but jump onto the browser and uh, get to this web page and I'll just change a couple of parameters so you get a quick idea of uh, how this tool is actually working. This is going to be of course a very short video because there is not much coding. I'm just informing you of a web page that is cool and I know that you will benefit from this. So let's jump in. And to get to this web page, all you need to do is type playground.tensorflow.org in your uh, browser. And I'll leave the link as part of the description down below. But uh, once you get here, let's go ahead and play with this a little bit. So this is the simulator that they put together and there are various parameters that you can play with. First thing is different types of data sets. So go ahead and play with that. And you have uh, different types, well, two types of uh, problem type, classification or regression. So there is nothing fancy like semantic segmentation, which basically is nothing but classification down to a pixel level. But these are the two general types of uh, uh, problem types that we deal with anyway. So for now, let me just go ahead and select classification. And uh, this is just to play it just goes through epochs and you can see how the model gets evolved as it goes through epochs and uh, this is another cool thing i mean you can learn about learning rate uh, right here so very small learning rate how the training is going uh, right i mean very uh, fast learning rate and again, there are reasons why uh, what this does not explain is why something is happening right so if you have very uh, fast learning rate then you may never find the true minimum of your of your uh, uh, of your problem right there that you're trying to optimize so those type of uh, uh, explanations of course they're not given here but this is as it says it's just a playground so go ahead and visually learn the influence of various uh, parameters on your on your problem that you're trying to solve so let us go ahead and uh, just pick something here let's go ahead and pick the uh, slowest learning rate obviously slowest learning rate means the model is going to learn in a very slow way and various activation functions right there typically for any hidden layers you know i uh, try to use relu again why that question is not answered here for that you need to refer somewhere else but let's just check uh, relu right there uh, regularization let's not worry about that right now you should have l1 and l2 i believe yeah those two right there and regularization rate think of this in a way as dropout rate yeah dropout is a form of regularization but we'll use l1 or l2 right there in case you wonder what they are again this video is not to explain what these are but uh, think of l1 as a more robust uh, regularization again what does regularization do it helps you in minimizing this overfitting problem that you have yeah so you can see what l1 and l2 do uh, i usually pick l2 when I have outliers and I usually, otherwise I just uh, pick L1 as a default. Again, not a lecture about uh, regularization, but go ahead and play with that. And what else do we have? Uh, there are a few uh, different data types. Let's pick the toughest one. So here you have two classes, one the oranges, class and the other one is the bluish class right so this is not an easy problem to solve because this is not just uh, you cannot i mean if you have a problem like this you can draw a line in the middle you're done this is class a that's class b but this is a bit more challenging so it will take a little more time a little longer to converge on these type of problems so let's go ahead and select that one a uh, ratio of training to test data i usually do at least 70% uh, of uh, training data remaining 30% test testing again you can see the influence 
of uh, or the effect of changing this of having only 10% uh, test data how does overfitting uh, look like so you can play do all of that right here and we can add a bit of a noise so it's not perfectly spiral over there so let's go ahead and do something like this yeah and a batch size of 10 is okay and this is what type of features go in, right? I mean, a neural network is you have uh, input features, they go into hidden um, uh, layers, and you can have multiple hidden layers, and then you have an output layer. In this case, we have two classes, so the output, let's leave it to two output classes right there. Um, and uh, let's add another hidden layer. It's just one, let's add another hidden layer. Let's add a few more neurons, just, just to sh uh, show you how things look like. And again, the more hidden layers, the more overfitting chance there is for your problem. So go ahead and add more layers and see how things work out. And in terms of features, let's start with X1 and X2, which is if you're coming from image processing background, think of these two as just having pixel values. Uh, so that is your uh, inputs and you can have more fancy. You see, uh, when I select sign X, you see how in the background you have the sign function going on. So if you want, you can add sign. But let's just start with these two. Uh, that's okay. Of course, we want to show test data right there, both training and test data. If you do discretize output, I believe that what that means is threshold the output, but it's up to you if you want to include that. So with these parameters, let's go ahead and hit start. So you see our learning rate is so slow, we are not seeing anything. You see the line right there, the solid one is for testing, the gray one is for training. So both of these are going down, believe it or not, and the distance between them is converging, and if it's a good solution, uh, which is not overfitting, then, then they should completely uh, come down. This learning rate is too slow, so even after 700 epochs, we get nothing, so let me pause reset and let me change the learning rate to something reasonable 0 0.003 and let's go ahead and start it now you see how fast these are uh, converging and let's see how so they both are converged now i see that you see how the training loss right there is slightly above the testing loss that indicates some sort of a overfitting but then it fixed itself after uh, training for a long time so there you go so that is that is uh, how you can actually experiment with this. So if I remove another hidden layer, let's go ahead and uh, change the learning rate to 0 0.01. So now it should be even faster. Oh, what did I do? Oh, you can actually step through one epoch at a time. I did not even check that before. Oh, there you go. So now uh, you can see how the training loss right here is down here and the testing loss is up over there. So because we are not fitting the problem very well, we only have one hidden layer right here. So the type of accuracy that you get is a bit limited, but let's see if something happens if I go too many epochs. Yeah, if you go way too many epochs, what's going on there? <laughs> your training loss is getting better, but your testing loss is not. So this is a classic overfitting problem. So now let's leave it right here and see if regularization helps in any way. Let's just select some parameters and let's do exactly the same thing for a little while and see if the distance between my testing and training loss is going to increase after a certain number of epochs or if the regularization is kind of keeping things, uh, keeping things uh, from getting overfitted. So I think this is the best I'm getting right there in terms of loss and you see it keeps going on but then uh, it's not getting worse. So you can see the effect of uh, regularization right there. So go ahead and play with a whole bunch of these uh, parameters. This is pretty fun. Now you can actually add more features. Let's go ahead and add more features and let's end the video on this note. And let's add another hidden layer, more neurons. Let's add more neurons and you can actually look at the weights right there, study, uh, study these weights after each, uh, there's so much to learn. I can spend all day here. Uh, but I'm not going to make this video all day, but I'm going to spend all uh, my Saturday looking at these and trying to play with this. So let's run one more time and you can see how uh, the model is evolving. It's actually getting better, getting better. And you can try to turn the regularization off to see if it gets any better. So it got stuck right there. All of a sudden on the gradient descent, it found like a nice path to go down. So now it is actually getting down. The loss is going down. 
and uh, yeah so this is this is what i wanted to show you isn't that cool this is a nice visual way of learning exactly how uh, how different parameters are going to influence your output and this is nothing but decision space right i mean that's the decision space it's created highly nonlinear obviously so you have very nice model fitting right there okay guys uh, i hope you really find this to be useful and as excited as i am about playing with this tool and i should thank uh, my colleague who mentioned to me about the existence of this i'm surprised when i found this this is such an incredible tool i should have found it out myself but i'm glad my colleague actually found this for me and i know what i'll be doing this saturday so thank you